So news just came out that Ruby was getting a crossover comic with the Justice League, so let's talk about it. That's right, your two favorite brands that everyone has been asking and begging for this entire time is here? All right, let's not get ahead of ourselves. For those of you thinking this is weird and doesn't make sense, that is true. But DC has been doing this for ages. The amount of crossovers DC has had with different franchises is absurd. They've teamed up with the Power Rangers, the Ninja Turtles, Hanna-Barbera. The crossover comics with the DC icons is nothing new, but just now it's an anime crossover because Warner Media owns both Ruby and DC and they could do whatever they want. Admittedly, I don't know how those other crossover comics have turned out because I unfortunately am not much of a comic reader myself, though I would like to be. I don't know if they were good and faithful to each franchise involved, or if it was pure entertainment value, I cannot say. But anyway, the plot synopsis we are given here says, Ruby slash Justice League introduces fans of manga and superheroes to Bruce Wayne, Clark Kent, and Diana, Prince of Remnant, fighting with Team Ruby. That's also interesting because it says Diana, Prince of Remnant, and not Themyscira or anything she's actually related to. Anyway, a new Grimm is running rampant across the island of Patch, where Ruby and Yang grew up, and Ruby and Yang must team up with a young red and blue clad farm boy to stop it. Meanwhile, Blake meets a mysterious woman who suddenly appeared on Menagerie. But her purpose for being there remains a secret, and why does she act like she hasn't been around modern society? So Ruby and Yang are obviously meeting Superman, while Blake is meeting Wonder Woman. By the sounds of it, this crossover seems to be placing the DC characters into the universe of Ruby. So it's not that Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman ever existed in their own universe prior, it's as if they have always been born into the world of Remnant. Their past never existed, they are starting anew. And based off the characters' designs, it's very obvious as well. Looking at Batman, they made him a faunus, a literal bat faunus, with four ears, as per usual. And for those of you who are DC fans who are watching this video and don't know anything about Ruby, faunus are just like human-animal hybrids. They also made Aquaman a faunus. Don't know where he comes into play. But we've also got Cyborg, The Flash, and Green Lantern. They all appear to look fairly normal. I don't see anything too distinctly different about any of them. Their character designs are kind of just altered. It should be interesting to see if they even try to explain The Flash's speed or the Green Lantern's ring. Or literally anything unique like Superman's strength, Wonder Woman's ageless being. You know, DC canon. I feel like they're just going to try to throw it off, especially Barry Allen's speed as his semblance. But we've seen speed semblances in Ruby before, and they are not the Flash. But of course, above all, we've got the Trinity, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. I'll be honest, I kind of hate the way Superman looks. He looks like a smug antagonist in a high school drama. On the flip side, I really like the way Wonder Woman looks. I think she looks better on the cover than the concept art, but I think she looks pretty cool. It sounds like they're still sticking to her normal story of aging very slowly, because it said that she's come to Menagerie and looks like a fish out of water, per usual for a Wonder Woman story nowadays, so it's still implying an isolated Themyscira-type island. I believe the purpose of this is that they're all teenagers. No one here is an adult, which kind of makes it weird because it's like, are you the Justice League or are you all just people who don't know each other yet? But listen. I think it could be very interesting, because as a premise, a lot of Ruby canon has to go out the window, which is always a good first step. So it sets itself up to be an isolated story. They don't have to worry about dealing with Salem, making it to a new kingdom, it's minimizing the picture, and all it has to do is deliver a good, small, self-contained story. Now does it set itself up great right off the bat? No, considering Blake is in her volume 4 outfit while everyone else is in their volume 1 clothes, but you know, let's just call that a mulligan. Interesting dynamics could be put into play here, but it gets into the question by already established characters. By that, I mean Weiss and Bruce Wayne. Neither of them were mentioned in the synopsis we were given. It said Ruby and Yang were going to meet Superman on Patch, and Blake was going to meet Wonder Woman at Menagerie, so perhaps Weiss is going to meet Bruce Wayne at Atlas. Both already established iterations of characters are amongst the world's richest corporations. Weiss has the Schnee Dust Company, and Bruce Wayne has Wayne Enterprises. But that's the pre-established Bruce Wayne. The Bruce Wayne now is 
A, a faunus, which in Remnant are supposed to be discriminated against. The show hasn't done a good job at it. Also, the Schnee Dust Company uses faunus labor, so I'm curious if they're going to try and change Bruce's motivation from his parents being murdered. Does something that have to do with the Schnee Dust Company? I would guess probably almost definitely not. A revenge plot against Weiss seems a bit too convoluted for a seven issue series, or at least a revenge plot against the Schnee Dust Company. Also, Weiss would 100% lose without a doubt. She can't win a fight against a nameless henchman, let alone stand a chance against literal Batman. I think they may have chosen a very specific path with Wonder Woman and Blake. In simplest of terms, I think they're just recreating the first Wonder Woman movie, Diana's a fish out of water in modern society. But instead of not understanding the clash and societal difference between men and women, it's going to be human and faunus. It'll be very in character, it'll be very easy to do, but at the same time, it'll be a literal representation of that, hey, let me copy your homework and I'll just change a few things meme. I don't know if that's what they're doing, this is me just speculating based off contextual clues, but I have a hunch that's what they may be doing with Diana at least. By the sounds of it, it doesn't seem like any of the Ruby girls are actually together, like they're all scattered, except for Ruby and Yang. And if that's the case, I think it actually would be the best option till like the very end. It's actually pretty neat thinking of these smaller character arcs each of them can go on with each of these other DC icons, instead of kicking things off with an 11 man squad right out the gate as Ruby has a tendency to do. In reality, if you ask me, all this has to do is stick to the themes of each of the characters, mainly the DC characters, because they are well-established icons. Fundamentally, who they are, what they represent, and why. If they can do that, then they're most of the way there. Even if it's going to be the most cliche corny thing, that's what people want from these characters. They want what they know. I think it could be good, or at the very least, I hope it's at least a fun, gimmicky story I can at least enjoy when it's all out. That's what I'm at least hoping for. I haven't mentioned the digital release happens March 9th, and the physical print gets released on April 27th. I'm excited and optimistic. But what do you guys think? Are you excited for it? What do you think will happen in it? Be sure to let me know any and all thoughts in the comments below, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.